Everyone has a story. I get them to tell it. Welcome to the Aaron Bender Podcast, conversations with media personalities about their personal and professional lives and journeys. Cannot thank you enough for all the support. We have reached 10,000 downloads and views, people. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the support, all the listens on your favorite platforms or watching on YouTube or nightly at 11 p.m. Pacific or 2 a.m. Eastern on DB&A TV at DB&A Television TV or streaming with the DB&A TV app on Amazon Fire, Roku, and Apple TV. Before we get to my conversation with PJ Butta, a little about my story. I'm a widowed dad of two girls who just lost their mom a grieving husband, a man in recovery trying to reconnect with the world with fresh eyes, faith, and perspective, a college journalism professor, a white guy in a world of injustice, a 20-year broadcast media veteran who had his dream job and then lost it. A year and a half ago, God gave me a gift, an opportunity to stop, step back, and breathe so I can learn about love, vulnerability, forgiveness, grace, self-care, patience, and understanding. P.J. Butta is an L.A. hip-hop radio icon from the 92.3 The Beat days in the 90s to now doing afternoons on the legendary K-Day. In addition to his on-air work, he teaches broadcasting, runs his own podcast network, and pours the nightcap weeknights at 8 p.m. Pacific on IG Live playing slow jams in front of the fireplace using that platform to help people in need. All of this fresh off his battle with COVID. I got that right after... New Year's, so I guess when that surge was happening during the holidays, I uh, had it for like 11 days. And, uh, you know, it was great. The first seven days, I was like, ah, oh, you know, this is nothing. COVID, people are, <laughs> people are wusses. I've never about heard anybody dying. describe it like that. Psh, ah, yeah, COVID, sh- whatever. whatever. Die? You're dying? Ah, uh, you guys are wusses. Uh, and, then, and then reality hits day seven, like, bam, you know, hit me with the fever and the fatigue and couldn't get up. So, for the next three days up to, uh, you know, to day 11, I was just like, you know, fever and just couldn't move. And, uh, you know, finally got over it. And luckily for me, I wasn't and am not a long hauler. I don't have any side effects. You know, I was worried because after I was OK, I, uh, you know, I, I had that that lung issue that most people have where it, it's you can't breathe. And it felt to me like asthma. It felt like my lungs were burning. Yeah. Uh, so luckily, I only had that for one day. You know, I was like, OK, I, I can't have this, especially, you know, being in radio, you know, you use your voice. <laughs> oh, so oh nothing. That, you just need to breathe and talk. Oh, no but, big deal. But that was so hard, you know, because even voice tracking. So I'd be like, hey, you know, it's 935K, it's PJ. But uh, and, uh, you know, I was like the kid in oh, Malcolm no. in the middle. That one kid who was <laughs> yes. wheezing. Yes. Uh, so luckily, I was like, yo, this can't happen. You know, this is my livelihood. Uh, so I, I was kind of Googling, like breathing exercises and doing yoga. And literally a day after I was fine. I was like, oh, thank you. I'm, I'm great. I'm, you know, that was the extent of my uh, the COVID. And I survived it. And I, I need to get a shirt that says I survived COVID. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's it's so scary, though. It's so scary. It is because I mean, when I got it, you know, the first thing is like, OK, there's a possibility I could die or I literally I, I go to sleep I'm like this might I might not wake up. You know, I might just not breathe. So that was it was a fear, of course. Wow. Uh, but that that didn't happen, luckily for me. And, uh, you know, as so you've got one daughter, I've got uh, two daughters. And my first thought now, especially with my wife passing, my first thought is, OK, I whatever's going on, I got to make sure that that I take care of myself. I got to make sure that the girls are taken care of and everything like that. Um, what were some talks like that that you had with your girl? Uh, I mean, it was just like. Uh, just like, hey, you know, because she's old COVID. enough now to understand she's uh, 16, 16. Yeah, about to be yeah. 17. So, I mean, w- with her uh, and also Madika, too, it was just like, hey, I got, I got COVID. You know, you know, it's it doesn't seem serious, but, you know, there was a chance that, you know, things may not happen. And uh, at least, you know, for Nautica, she's like, OK, well, at least I got that, that life insurance I can collect. <laughs> So, <laughs> so she would, she would check on me every day. And then my daughter's like, how you doing? You know, did you die? <laughs> like, no, Oh man. So the, the love be, pouring into the right, PJ. <laughs> right. There's no uh, cashing in that life insurance check yet. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. But it, the, the thought was there, but you know, we, they made sure and checked up to make sure I was okay. Work-wise, how did it all go? Because, you know, in radio, we, we checked in, you and I talked about this time last year, give or take, um, you know, how things were going with COVID you know, are you working from home? Are you going in? How did it all turn out as the year progressed? And of course, I mean, 
now things are finally getting lifted. So for a year, what did you do? Well, I think at our station, it was different. Uh, for me, I never, you know, most people in radio voice track from home. Uh, I actually went to the studio for the simple fact that one, the studio was down the street. Uh, and I know nobody was there because no one was there during COVID and no one's there during my show regardless. So I was like, I felt safe and comfortable to go in. There might have been like a couple days uh, that I didn't go in. And obviously when I had COVID, I wasn't in. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I went in the studio and did my regular show. Uh, so that was, you know, it really didn't change anything for me. But you picked up a lot of work beyond just the radio show. Yeah, I mean, besides, I mean, I got many jobs, man. It's like that uh, Jamaican uh, skit on uh, In Living Color. Uh, you know, besides... Oh, we're going back. Do not, <laughs> yeah. do not reference In Living Color and not expect somebody in the comments being like, wait, how old are you again? Right, yeah, yeah. I got vampire blood, so I'm really old. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, besides radio, okay, they had to do another radio show, an international radio show, which was which also wasn't affected. That I voice track anyway. It's a countdown show called the Official World Chart, the top twenty songs, uh, you know, top forty, but it's the top twenty in the world. Yeah. Uh, so I was able to do that. Yeah, you know, been and that that's a show I've been doing from home. So that's a nothing. Uh, and then teaching, you know, and you know. Uh, you, you're a professor too. You know, I, I'm a professor at a community college, Mount uh, Mount Sac, Alan yep. Walnut, Mount San Antonio College. Save your nuts, Sac five. jokes. <laughs> wait, wait, I stepped over that. Just throw that in there, and I'll, <laughs> yeah, and no, I'll, I'll yeah. edit and post. <laughs> yeah. uh, Mount Sac. You know, you want me to do it again? Is that what yeah, yeah? Do it again. Just do okay. it again. I'll, I'll, right. I'll do it in post. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm a professor at uh, Mount Sac, which stands for Mount San Antonio College. So uh, save your nuts, Sac jokes. As most people will, will say, which you I went spent there. five you years there, spent five years at Mount yeah. Sac. Yeah. Three yeah, years so trying know. to figure out what the hell I wanted to do. And then and two then, years and, like, oh, good radio. That's the one. Yes. And then and, and spent one year figuring out, oh, it has nothing to do with nut sacks. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so when you, as you know, with the transition, the transition to online. So, you know, we had maybe a couple of weeks or to, to kind of get ready for that. Um, so I was still able to teach and not lose that job uh, and do it online. And, you know, I still do that. And uh, yeah, so I was doing and then I kind of picked up a, uh, you know, another job during the pandemic, which is uh, the nightcap where I, you know, live stream DJing. You know, most of you may know of Dean Nice who started it. And that's kind of where I got the idea like a, a day or two later. I was like, that's kind of cool how Dean Nice just jumped on and, and, you know, play for the people. And I was like, you know, I, I kind of want to do that too. And let me do something different, go in a different lane and, and kind of focused more on R&B and slow jams, kind of like, you know, because when I was a kid, I know how it was for you. You know, before I went to bed, I would listen to, you know, the late night radio show, the, the love show, the slow jams, whether it was, you know, Art LeBeau or Kevin Slow Jam and James. I need to hear, a, I need to hear your KSJJ. You can't get uh -oh. out of here. I think I had you talking like Theo two years ago. We're not going to go there this time, but I need to hear your KSJJ. Yes, Kevin Slow Jam and James like this. Hi, it's Kevin Slow Jam and James. <laughs> and uh, and and thoughts and prayers oh. to him because uh, he he also had COVID and is battling oh. it. He just got out recently. He was in the hospital uh, for a month. So uh, KSJJ, if you're watching this, man, uh, get well, stay strong, brother. I I I'm gonna. I think I might still have his number in my phone. If, I don't know mm. if it's the same number, but but yeah, everybody everybody who grew up in LA in the nineties, listening to 92.3, the beat, they had a Theo impression. They had a KSJJ impression. And if you didn't, then you really didn't listen to the station. Yeah, no, everyone, everyone who listened to the beat, a lot of people did do know those people and can do an impression or at least try to. Yeah. So, so yeah. tell me again, let's, let's go deep into the nightcap because it's not just, Oh, okay. I'm going to go on IG live and you're just going to watch me. There's a lot of interaction. And I want to get also to the idea that, uh, every night it, every night you, you have a link there to your cash app and is it Venmo or is it just cash app? It's both. And, okay. you know, to, starting from the beginning. So, you know, like I said, I just jumped on, it was supposed to be like a one night thing. It was like, Hey, let me just do something, play some slow jams. Cause I know people were stressing out, uh, as we began lockdown. So, you know, let me play some music to kind of calm the nerves. Uh, and, you know, I do it from this is the location that you see us while you see the fireplace in the background. That's kind of the mood we set. I mean, it's kind of daylight now, but at night it's really sexy. Trust me. And, uh, <laughs> you know, especially with the, with the music going on. So it's supposed to be a one night thing. 
And then, you know, there, there was literally like maybe a dozen, 15 people that showed up uh, and they enjoyed it. And they said, can you do it again tomorrow? And I was like, well, you know what? You know, why not? You know, I, I can't go anywhere. So yeah. I might as well go yeah. ahead. So what, so it turned in from one day and it, it turned into like over a year. Uh, that first you know, night, was that three hours? Well, the first night was I started uh, at 9 p.m. It was more than three hours. Uh, the show went for like five to six hours. Oh, so it was man. all night. It was all night. And I did it six. I started out six days a week. So six hours, six oh. days. It was a job. It became, oh, my it, gosh. It, well, it's, it's not a job because I enjoyed it. But right, to some right. people, be a, they think of it as a job. You're, I'm doing you know work for six hours playing music. Yeah. And it just started growing and growing. And it, it got to a point to where, uh, okay, let me do something different to make it. Because I get bored easily. And I was like, let me do something. Let me start adding artists to it, like doing artist interviews. So I hit up John B. John B. was my first guest. Uh, and then after John B., we had like Frankie J. And I had all, you know, people that I knew that I know would come on. And I had Teddy Riley before the big Teddy Riley versus Babyface uh, Wi-Fi fiasco. And when he was on my show, he was there with great Wi-Fi. No problems. <laughs> uh, and, he, and he was literally on that show for four hours. Like I had Teddy Riley for four hours, what? Uh, which was amazing. So it, that was a thing. That was kind of like the, the kind of niche that I had, niche that I had where it's like, okay, now I have the slow jams, R&B. I got artists. Uh, and then to add an extra level to it, I was like, you know, it, uh, so it doesn't become a job and it kind of has a purpose. I added the charity aspect to it. So every night, uh, as you said, I would pin up my cash app and Venmo and say, hey, here's my cash app. Here's my Venmo. All the money that you donate, because I know a lot of other DJs were just putting up their cash app Venmos to, as a tip to get paid as, as a way to make money. Yeah. Um, but I was fortunate enough where I didn't need to make money. I still had my job. So I didn't I didn't need to uh, supplement my income. So I was like, let me take this money that you guys would typically tip the DJ and let's put it to a good charity. So every week I had different charities. Uh, over the course of the year, we raised close to $50,000 to various charities, uh, wow. different food banks, uh, mental health awareness. Uh, even the nightcap has, uh, you know, has kind of like a following. I, I don't want to say a cult following, but we do have a community. And it, it, it came to a point where even some of the our community members in the nightcap uh, needed help. So we'd raise money for them. Like someone, hey, I had a nurse who just lost her job. She's like, hey, I just lost my job. I feel embarrassed. You know, if you can help out. I was like, no, no question. Let's let's, let's, all, let's help her out. And people would raise money for her. Uh, and that that's kind of, that was the cause and the purpose. And that was kind of more of the drive for me uh, as it became over the course of the year. Being in media, as long as you have, you get a lot of people from the community, whether it's now Nightcap on IG Live or on K-Day or 92.3, you get a lot of people reaching out to you looking for either advice or guidance or just therapy. You know, the, the, let me call the guy on the DJ because he seems to listen or the guy on the radio, because he seems to listen to people who call in. Uh, how, how do you handle that platform? How do you handle that responsibility? You kind of know it comes with the territory. Um, you know, we are kind of therapists. You know, it's funny because people listen to the radio, but as a DJ, you have to listen also to the people. Uh, and they, you know what it is, is people in media, whether it's radio, TV, if you watch or listen to someone and, you know, these mediums, radio and TV, and even if you're watching YouTube or IG Live, it's a personal medium. It's an experience between that person who's watching and who they're watching. So they feel like they have a connection. It's a personal connection. Uh, you know, like I've never... I. You know, I've always watched like ABC Seven, so I see Dallas Reigns. I ran into him one day. I was like, "Oh, Dallas, man!" Like it's like I knew him, but I, that's the first time I'm meeting him. You know, and that's the same thing with people like me. It's like, "Hey, PJ," you know, I've never met him in my life. Like, how do you know my name? It's like, "Oh, wait a minute." They probably listen to the radio, um, and then that's and because of that personal connection that we have as on-air personalities, people think they know us, so they feel a little more. Uh, they can be more personal and, you know, they come to us for comfort, just like a friend, anyone that you're, you're very personal with, they come to you as a friend uh, in need and comfort. And, and that's exactly what I do on the radio. Uh, you know, especially during COVID, you know, we, we kind of kept things normal and kind of stayed away from COVID news and stuff and try to keep it, make it normal. So where I was still doing, you know, my radio jokes and, you know, being a wise ass and being sarcastic. <laughs> and then the nightcap was kind of the same thing where I incorporate that. Uh, you know, cracking jokes within the chat, but also you had the music, which was a good therapy for a lot of people who lost. I mean, we so many people lost people. We all know someone who they lost during COVID. 
Uh, and in that nightcap, people would come in and would say, you know, I lost so and so, but you know, just listening to the music would make me forget about it or bring me memories of good thoughts. Uh, and it was, it's just good therapy. And that's where we're really therapists when you think about it. Yeah. And, and the idea that uh, somebody on the West Coast can take a break for either a few minutes or a few hours from eight to 11 or on the East Coast from 11 to two, like, OK, kids are in bed. We're you know, this is this is my time, you know, to kind of kick the shoes off or whatever especially when you've got such political strife over the last year plus uh, the police killings, the, you know, COVID and all, all the different things that go into, okay, let me provide these people an escape. And that's exactly what, uh, you know, I've been providing on the radio and then on IG live with the nightcap. It's definitely a, an escape. Um, let's go back to the platform idea as a person of color in media you've got a voice that a lot of people don't have. How do you handle that? Um, man, I, I, no, I don't, I don't think about it. I don't know how I handle it. I just kind of just do my job. I don't really have that in mind. Like, okay, I gotta, I'm a person of color and have to, you know, speak a certain way or, or represent, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to be, you know, I'm, I'm really about equality and I'm not trying to, you know, say who I, you know, people like some people, don't even know that I'm, I'm Filipino, right? Because it's not something that I too, it's not, it's not something that I'm, you know, you know, like to flaunt people's faces. It's not saying that I'm not proud. It's just like, I'm just like, yo, we, we all have kind of like this, the same under the skin color. We're all the same, you know, the bones and the blood is all that. So I'm, I'm that type of person. Um, and I think that's also what kind of makes me universal in a way. Uh, the simple fact that people don't know what I am, they don't, oh, oh I can't believe you're Filipino. They'll, they'll, it's always the wild guesses. Oh, you're Puerto Rican, you're Mexican, you're, you're half black. Uh, you know, it's, it's whatever they want to see. And, and that, yeah, as you know, you want to find something in common with a person. So if, yeah. if that makes them feel comfortable, um, that's great. And uh, that, that's, you know, try to find that connection. My thing is just trying to, you know, treat everyone equally and, and try to, especially during these times, to uh, make sure that if they need comfort, they just need someone there, someone to make them laugh, someone to be there when they cry or, or help them uh, if they need something monetary or anything else in life. That's that's what I kind of strive for. What's your, I mean, there's so many layoffs in media in the last year plus. Uh, what's your take on where radio is and where it's going? And just kind of media in general, I mean, you're, you're, you're on IG live three hours a night. You know, if I, if I told you five years ago that, okay, in 2021, you're going to have an IG live show. First off, you might even say IG live. What? Cause I don't, I don't even know if there was a live five years ago on Instagram, but just kind of your take on, on the state of media, the state of radio and the state of, of audio platforms. Yeah, I mean, people probably hate me for this, but I think radio is, radio is never going to die. It's, it's, you know, it's had many predictions that it would die since its beginning to when TV came about, uh, radio is going to be dead because radio was like TV before. That's when you get your dramas and comedies was through the radio. And then when, uh, you know, you have records and CDs and stuff, oh, no one's going to listen to radio because now they can just buy their favorite music. Or remember when satellite radio came out, oh, satellite radio, no, one, no one's going to pay for that. Uh, you know, and that HD radio. So, you know, there's always been a radio's death has been predicted. I don't think it'll die, but I think it's definitely going to pivot uh, for the simple fact that now that we have, you know, what, I don't know what you're on, but I'm on my phone right now. The phone does so many things to where you can get your music. You can watch your shows all on your phone. It's how we're consuming media. It's totally different and how we're consuming it. And especially the younger generations, you have daughters. I don't know if at that point where they're consuming music and watching shows, but they're probably doing it on a phone or a tablet. And they're discovering, at least my daughter uh, is discovering music, not on the radio. It's, right. it's on YouTube. It's on the Spotify or Pandora or something like that. And I think that's going to change because that, that generation, when we were growing up, we, we had, we, we've got the built-in habit of we go in a car, listen to radio, or we have a transistor radio and we're listening to it. Kids, no one's buying radios. Kids don't buy, they have their phone and there's not a radio on the phone. There's a something like a radio on the phone, which is the streaming services and the YouTubes and all that. So it's definitely going to change. I think, especially for the, when you figure that that younger demographic, we're going to lose them. Radio is going to have to figure it out. I don't know what the solution is. I think personally it's going to go probably more of the podcast route where they'll be airing syndicated podcasts 
on radio stations, but as far as the younger demographic music, so those like those hip hop stations, uh, you know, and, and the, the top 40 stations, they're gonna have to figure that out uh, because, you know, that, that demographic does, has never used radio and won't know how to use yeah. it. The older demographic, that's why radio stations that are playing oldies uh, in LA, the K Earths, you know, uh, the coasts, you know, the classic rock stations, because that demographic is older and they grew up on radio. So it's going to be very interesting within the next five years to see what radio does and how they pivot to attract that younger audience, because the younger audience doesn't know about radio. And as you know, I mean, you know, uh, the word radio is even kind of that you, you notice that they're slowly kind of transitioning, fading away, like intercom had radio.com app. And they just changed it to uh, Odyssey. Right. Uh, right. You know, and, and so people are not, uh, that's not a buzzword anymore. It's like, you know, kids are like, what is radio? What is yeah, that ABC mean? News radio? I think changed a few years ago to ABC News audio. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, and there's, it's, there's at least one station back East. I don't know exactly where South Carolina, maybe, but there it's an all podcast station. And I think that's, that's what the future is going to be because the uh, podcasts are, are especially booming. Uh, I'm even going into that platform right now and starting a, a podcast network called Rep Media. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that's the future I see it. And I, I kind of, uh, I, I saw that about a year ago and I was like, okay, I've, I've seen radio's demise a lot of times, but now I kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel. So let me find something that's still in my lane, but, uh, that, that has a future and podcasting seems to be the future. Um, where did that ingenuity on your part come from? Did, did it have to be learned or taught? Did it have to be? Has it always been there where you're like, okay, there's a lane that's not being occupied or at least is not getting enough attention. I want to occupy that lane. Where where did that come from? I mean, just myself, I'm always looking at things, but I think COVID kind of, uh, you know, lit a fire under my ass. But even before COVID, I had this idea for the podcast network. So I think for me, I recognized I saw a problem uh, at the time that's totally changing now was, you know, about a year and a half ago, I noticed that in the podcasting realm, it was, you know, mostly white. They didn't have uh, anything for people of color or created by people of color, at least a, a, a full network that just focused on that. And now, you know, you have Charlemagne who has the, the Black Effect Network. Uh, and then there's some other ones too, but there's no like real main, uh, main one uh, that's kind of like name branded yet. And, you know, I, I kind of wanted to jump into that lane while it was still there. So that's kind of what I'm doing with my podcast network. PJ, it's good to catch up, man. I, I like I, I like these little catch ups. I love the nightcap. I I had a, another guest on recently, Destiny Malibu. She also goes on live at eight o'clock, and so I kind of go back and forth between you two while I'm putting the girls to sleep. Um, uh, what does she do on her IG live? Uh, she sings and she interacts with with her uh, with her audience. They 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 um, she calls them the Angel Squad, and uh, she you know I love that um i love that interaction you know i i really do the <laughs> i could tell because i didn't find the night, nightcap because I, I wasn't on social media for all of last year i didn't find the nightcap until earlier this year and it took me a minute to kind of figure out okay wait a minute this is okay wow this is a whole community okay wow They're, everybody's saying hi okay let's go and you're you're going till 11 o'clock and it's it's like you're just letting it breathe you know and and i i love that nighttime feel for the ig live where it's just let's wind down let's just chill let's just hang out and there's there's you you, you come to a place with no worries you know yeah and, that, and you were talking about interaction which is a great thing and that's you know something that as radio personalities we kind of forgot too so that was like when i noticed i was like oh the interaction is really you know it's it's not that i'm giving away tickets to this or that it's really people just want to right. interact and hear and and be seen uh, you know, when I first did the nightcap, that was one of the things where people would come from other lives and just stay there, you know, and that's like, I always interview like the night, like I really get to know the people that are on there. So I'm like, Hey, you know, how'd you find the nightcap? And they say, Oh, I was on so-and-so's live. And, you know, they told me about yours. So I jumped here and, you know, I've, I've been here ever since. I was like, well, why, what made you not go back to where you were? It's like, because you actually say hi to me, you see me, you recognize me and you talk to me. And, you know, that's kind of like the basics that we forget, uh, in radio or anything, you know, just interacting and talking to people and making them feel special and important just by seeing them. We're going to nerd out a little bit. I want you to describe to me your setup for uh, the nightcap, because I I'm, I'm watching it, trying to figure out, it's like, okay, it, it, it's gotta be on his phone because Instagram 
doesn't work all that well for, on anything but a phone. So it's got to be on a phone or a mobile device. Uh, maybe he's got it plugged in through his mixer. Uh, but what is his mixer? So what what is your what is your setup? Let's just if geek I, out here, man. If if I tell you, it's I mean I'm going to tell you, you would be surprised because I got the the question asked many times when I first started. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had like little John's people here. Yo, how does your sound sound so good? You know, what are you what are you playing on? What what are you using? Right. What are you connecting right. to your phone? So yes, I'm on my phone, my iPhone, uh, and really, and I have a mixer here. It's a controller, uh, you know, so I can play tunes uh, out of my laptop. So I'm actually at, it's the same setup as that if I was at a club or DJing a wedding. Yeah. Uh, the only exception is instead of me plugging into my directly into my phone. I'm actually plugged into a Bluetooth speaker, uh, you know, and just had it real close to my phone. And this is like the Bluetooth speaker right here. It's one of these you. It's, uh, it's not it's actually wired into the phone. <laughs> no, it's Dude, not. Dude, it sounds wired. so good. It does. And I think it's just because the frequencies on here are just perfect for this phone. Because other people, you know, I tell them that. So they get like these big speakers or big Bluetooth. And they're like, yo, this sounds bad. The bass is really distorted. And I was like, well, get this specific one because. For whatever reason, it just sounds great on an iPhone. And, you know, I've been testing myself out, you know, because I know D Nice actually hooks up right into the phone and has like an iRig. You know, there's different things you can use an iRig. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, uh, so, you know, I was listening to the sound diffs like, man, mine sounds just as good as his. And you wouldn't believe that mine's just coming out of a Bluetooth speaker. Oh, my gosh. And what's nice about it really is that you can still have your phone actually plugged in and charging because if it's if it's tapped in, to a mixer, it's not charging. So you're just, you're, you've got your fingers crossed that whatever battery you got going on is going to last the next three hours. Right. Right. And the, the other thing is that, you know, I, again, I wanted to make it seem personal and it's like one-on-one -on -one connection. I didn't want to have like a mic in my, you know, near my mouth, like I'm talking to someone. Cause then it's like, you know, okay, this guy's like, you know, a real DJ instead of they feel like they're actually here in the pirate bar and I'm having a conversation with them. Tell me about the pirate bar, man. This is one of the first times I think I've actually <laughs> seen inside the pirate bar live it's gorgeous man i've I watched yeah. you build it on your on your instagram at pj butta uh tell me about the pirate bar ha has it worked out exactly uh as you expected because it's gorgeous Be man better than expected i mean it wasn't it was i didn't expect anything i didn't expect you know this i mean originally what had happened i was in my backyard i had a plot of land you know my daughter got old so she didn't need a playground no more so i got this grass area just sitting there so i was like okay what do i do with it uh, do I, you know, I build, build something, a guest house or something. And, uh, I was really, you know, into like tiny homes watching these shows. Oh, I love and, those. Uh, you know, Nautica was watching one of those shows and then across the banner came, Hey, if you're looking to put a tricked out shed in your backyard, I was like tricked out shed. And as I was doing research, like, Oh, people in Europe is a big thing where they have these sheds, whether it's like a tiny home or they make bars and stuff out of it. So I sent them an email or I, you know, I went to the website, fill out the application. They called me the next day. It's like, Hey, you know, we got your application. Uh, you know, what do you want to do with your shed? And I was like, well, you know, I'm, I'm in radio, so I need like a vocal booth. You know, I was, I was thinking like maybe a little studio or something like, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of boring. You know, you got yeah, something yeah. else. And I was like, well, I just built for my daughter for her birthday. I built a pirate themed water slide in my pool. It's like, oh, tell me more about that. And I was like, OK, you know, it has a pirate theme. Well, she goes, well, what if you do your shed like a pirate theme, like a pirate bar? I was like, I'm not a big drinker, but I mean, that sounds amazing. But I really need like a vocal booth. Like, hey, this is what we'll do. It'll be a bar, but there'll be a vocal booth in it. And I was like, OK, that now now <laughs> you're, you're telling me something. Now it sounds that sounds like something I can work with. Yeah. So they, yeah. they came out and, the, you know, they did everything. They, they bought the shed. They tricked it out. They designed it. Uh, and they gave me enough space to have a my own soundproof vocal booth in here so I can just go cut voice tracks and go in here, have some bourbon and go back to work. Uh, it's amazing. Yes. And they, it was a show called He Shed, She Shed, which is no longer. It was on the FYI network okay. and uh, it's no longer around. They only had one season. So I guess I shut it down. Right. right, it was right. So, they couldn't top this. <laughs> Once the and, pirate uh, bar is there, they're yeah. like, all right, we're done. We've hit the and, peak. And it, and it's, and it's been amazing because I've had so many great parties here, you know, a lot of sporting events here. And of course, you know, I've added and increased my bourbon uh, collection, which is probably the best west of the Mississippi. I was going to call you on that because <laughs> you're telling these people, I don't really drink that much. And I'm like, hey, why you got to lie to the people? Why you got to lie? Well, no, I mean, I didn't at that time, but now this <laughs> bar inspired me to drink more and uh, be a bourbon collector. And that's, uh, PJ, uh, how did you end up drinking so much? Well, it started when I built a bar in my backyard <laughs> and right. I had to fill it.
I had to fill it. It's like, it's like field of dreams. You build it and they will come. <laughs> and that's, Three uh, top bourbons of choice. Oh, easily. Uh, top choice. Uh, everyone, I'll go with the obvious of the Pappy Van Winkle, but specifically the 10 year. Uh, everyone will go for the most expensive ones, which are, you know, in the 15s or the 20, but the 10 year is amazing. And then anything, uh, number two, anything that Barrel Bourbon puts out, there's a company called Barrel Bourbon. They put out different batches, but every batch they put out every so often has been amazing after batch number six. And then my third one, and I'll go to my go-to, which is very, if anyone's watching this and just figure out, okay, those are kind of expensive because, you know, that Pappy 10 year is probably a good $800 a bottle. Uh, if not more, maybe in the thousands now. Whoa. And uh, and uh, so the barrels are around $90. So if you want a good, like inexpensive, like $20 one, like Old Forester is my great go-to that you can get for like 20 bucks, yes. Do you go neat? Do you go rocks? If so, how many? Do you go old fashioned? I go neat. So no ice cubes, just drink it like a man. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's why i got a lot of hair on my chest I like, <laughs> I like how as i'm saying anything after neat i saw you just completely like dude you right. could just stop you could just stop yeah, it's just yeah. neat yeah, no neat. anytime i need to anytime i drink bourbon it has to be an old-fashioned and it has to be mm -hmm. like i again i i've not made an old-fashioned in so long but let's just say it's two parts bourbon to one part whatever else I have to flip it because I just I I can't I can't do the hard liquor all that much. All right, you'll grow up, kid. I have and but and if you notice, <laughs> I have no hair on my chest. It's, yeah, see, that's what, that's what happens. But yeah, DJ, but thanks, it, man. I I really appreciate this. Squeezing in before the nightcap. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching the Aaron Bender podcast, whether it's on YouTube or nightly at 11 p.m. Pacific or 2 a.m. Eastern on DB&A TV at DB&A Television TV or streaming with the DB&A TV app on Amazon Fire, Roku and Apple TV. You can find me at AaronBender.com. If you have guest ideas or comments, email me AaronBenderMedia at gmail.com. Be well and thanks for watching.